Hi guys and welcome to a competitive deck tech video with Tavesh Doom of Fools partnered up with Krom Ludwigs Opius, a Ad Nauseam Grixis deck. This deck is brought to us by Playam, a fellow content creator who's been playtesting this deck and trying to figure it out for us. And if you're interested, Playam actually has a gameplay video uploaded on his YouTube channel where you can see how this deck is performing. If you're interested in watching that video, there you go. Here's a link. But why Tevesh? Why not play Tumna instead? With Tumna you have blue farm. With access to a lower CMC commander Tumna that can draw cards like Tevesh, right? And also access to the color identity of white. The thing with Tevesh is that it's actually easier in experience to get your Tevesh in play than your Krom. The deck is aiming at ritualing out Ad Nauseam as fast as you can to black and free generic that isn't that hard. And if you're aiming at getting mono black only, it is easier to get a Tevesh in play compared to getting a Krom in play. For example, this is a turn 1 Tevesh, but it's not a turn 1 Krom and it's not a turn 1 Tymna. And trust me, discarding your hand, getting a turn 1 Tevesh might actually be worth it. And as this deck is filled with rituals as Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Fast Mana Rocks and such, it is therefore quite consistent, capable of getting Tevesh in play, just like it would be able to get Tymna in play. But you'd rather have a Tevesh turn 2, turn 3 or turn 1 instead of having a Tumna at the same turn count. And Tevesh is almost better at drawing cards compared to Tumna and Krom. Or well, it's a little bit dependent. You see, Krom could, in theory, be drawing you 3 cards per turn, where Tevesh is at maximum not gonna draw anything at the first turn, because the first turn you're gonna create some thralls, and on the second turn after that you're gonna draw two cards, and on the third turn after that you're gonna draw two cards again. But Krom could draw more, yes. However, Krom isn't guaranteed card draw. If your opponents are playing responsively, Krom doesn't draw any cards at all. And if there are blockers in play, Tumna doesn't draw any cards either. Also, if you don't have any more creatures in play except Tumna, it doesn't really scale that much. Also, Tevesh has a win con, yes, I would like to actually phrase it as a win con at minus 10 ulti. Gain control of all commanders, put all commanders from all command zones onto the battlefield under your control. This actually means that if you ulti this and it goes from 10 to 0 and Tevesh goes to your command zone, then this ability is still on the stack, it will resolve and Tevesh will come back into play. And then you can actually sacrifice one of those commanders that you steal because it's a new Tevesh and draw three cards that turn. So you get to act, you get to take all your opponent's commanders, you get to sacrifice a commander and draw three cards and from here you basically have all your opponent's commanders. I mean, you're not winning the game, but you should be winning the game. Because of this, Tevesh actually creates almost a psychological effect on your opponents that you could utilize. Because Tevesh, being a plan C win con, I would highly rightly to say here, that trying to go for a Tevesh ulti as your plan A, don't go for that. That is really slow and really easy to interact with. The, your opponents just need a commander that got haste like Krom to attack Tevesh and kill it and it's done. Or any form of flying creature with evasion that's flying over your thralls and your Tevesh is gone. So don't go for a Tevesh ulti as your plan A. It's like a plan C that could happen if it gets there, which eventually actually sometimes happen because there are other things people are prioritizing. For example, let's say you're sitting with an odd nausea in your hand, which is your plan A wing con, but you have a Tevesh that your opponents just have to deal with. So let's say one of your opponents are suddenly tapping out their mana to cause a cyclonic rift to interact with your Tevesh plan C. Now that is gonna resolve because we don't really care. And then we use our mana to cause our odd nos now that everyone is tapped out and we win with our plan A. Now I should mention that this could also backfire. I mean, one of your other opponents could be sitting with that Ad Nauseam in their hand and we lose our Tevesh because we are a threat and another person taps out and can no longer interact with that Ad Nauseam. So now your opponents are utilizing your Tevesh in this exact same manner. That takes us to this deck's win con, which is Ad Nauseam. Try to riddle it out and try to draw as much card you can and try to figure out a form of win. Or if you don't reach the Ad Nauseam, cast Tevesh instead and start drawing cards and eventually draw into Ad Nauseam or something of the sort. And that something of the sort is Fast Oracle, Demonic Consultation and Tainted Pact. 
really stable, fast two card combos for this format. Or you go for Underworld Breach, Lion's Star Diamond and Brain Freeze to mill your out and then cast Fast Oracle from your deck and win the game or mill out your opponents and just pass turn and win the game that way. Tavesh also opens another two card combo with Baron, Master Wizard and Dockside Extortionist. So if Dockside is generating six treasures, you use two of those and then sacrifice another to activate Barin Master Wizard returning Dockside back to your hand. Pay two treasures and recast Dockside netting one treasure each loop, going infinite treasures and infinite mana. And with the infinite mana, you cast Tevesh. Use the plus one ability to generate a Thrall, then you use the Barian Master Wizard to sacrifice one of those Thralls to return Tevesh back to your hand, recasting Tevesh infinitely and using his ability infinitely, generating infinite Trolls. And with the infinite Trolls and infinite Tevesh abilities, you can activate the draw ability and draw your entire deck and then cast Fast and Oracle with your infinite mana and win the game. And Baron and Tevesh is pretty good on their own because with Tevesh you're producing token thralls, zero ones, that Baron can sacrifice to interact with your opponents, for example removing pesky stacks pieces. Another word to mention and even all to include is Skull Clamp. With Tevesh and Skull Clamp you, you know, I think you understand this, right? Don't even think about it. Just put Skull Clamp in your deck and you're gonna realize why it's an auto include for Tevesh. Cloud of Ferris has actually also proven to be a worthy card to consider. It's not an out to include, but for two mana, you get a 1-1 one, one with flying. That's a good blocker. And on the ETB, you will untap two mana, which means it's basically free. And then with Tevesh ability, you can sacrifice it instantly to basically just draw two cards on the go immediately. Also, Tevesh is weak versus flying creatures attacking him and dealing damage, removing his loyalty, eventually killing Tevesh. And this is a blocker, so if you don't need creatures to sacrifice, this is something that could protect Tevesh if you need him a little bit longer for your specific game plan. But otherwise, this is a perfect card to just cycle from your hand with throwing the two mana if you just don't want to use it, or just put it into play, sacrifice it with Tevesh, and draw more cards. You might be skeptic about Cloud of Fairies, but it is actually a decent card overall as it interacts really well with Vampiric Tutor, when you really need something into your hand in instant speed. Tevesh also makes rituals like Cooling the Weak and Infernal Plunge a little bit better as if he is creating creatures to sacrifice. This is something I've heard other Tumna blue farm decks having problems with because the only creature they are capable of sacrificing at the moment for the Cooling the Weak or the Infernal Plunge is that Tumna and you don't really want to sacrifice your Tumna into a Cooling of the Weak. I guess we should mention the Zero Mana Cost Kobold here because what the Zero Mana Cost Kobold brings is that effective Cooling the Weak immediately for no mana whatsoever. What Tevesh is bringing is a 5 mana cost Cooling the Weak enabler where you get to keep the 5 mana cost card Planeswalker that you've casted. The biggest thing to think about when you're piloting this deck is how to mulligan. This for example is a great opening hand. It contains a Jeweled Lotus, a, a few lands together and a Simeon Spirit Guide. So we have a turn 1 Tevesh or a turn 1 Krom, whichever prefers you better for the current situation. And then we even have a Wincon in the hand appear into the abyss and a Gilded Drake for some greedy interaction with your opponent's commanders as well. This hand is interesting. It contains a mana crypt which is gonna help us reach 3 mana at turn 1. However, we want to reach 5 mana as fast as we can. So this is somewhere of a turn 3 Tevesh or Krom, or if you're lucky and top decking into let's say an Arcane Signet, it could be a turn 2 Tevesh. So I think this is something you could consider keeping, especially that you have a Mystical Tutor in your hand, which is gonna find that odd nauseum. So you're probably going for like a turn 3, turn 2 of nauseum with this hand. Instead, you have the Mental Mister backup and you have a Greedy Skull Clamp if you're getting that Tevesh into play at turn two or somewhere around however the game flows out. This hand is too risky. We have a land, we have a Mox Diamond and we don't have a secondary land. So we have only one man at turn one. We have a Cabal Ritual. We have a Cooling the Weak, we have some interaction, but period, no, this is something we have to mulligan. However, here we found something that is all... Uh, this is the matchup dependent. You have a Mystical Remora, you have a turn one Mystic Remora and... This is a hand that could really fall back, so be really careful. And I mean, this is an all-in Mystic Remora, so I would actually probably ship this one as well. Here we have something interesting. This is a turn to Signet and the Demonic Tutor. 
phantasmal image if an opponent is casting a Doxile Extortionist or an interesting commander of their own, let's say one of our opponents are getting a turn 1 Chrome in play, then we could also have a turn 1 Chrome in play with the phantasmal image. So I might actually stay here, I might drop the mental misplay or the phantasmal image depending on what form of board state my opponents are up to. Here is another great opening hand with a Sol Ring, a Chromox. You know what, I think you can understand why this is a great open. Let's look at some bad openings hands instead because I think you see the picture. This is a decent opening hand as well. This is... yeah, this is probably something you would mulligan because you have a turn 2 rock and you don't have anything to do turn 1. I mean, this is something you could keep but I would probably skip it if it was my first seven. This is also not keepable because you have an Ancient Tomb and a Mox Diamond. No, I won't get you anywhere. This is, oh yeah, this is a perfect keep. If you're not going first, you get a turn one Doxad Extortionist. And from here, you, you should be able to almost have, oh, it's a very matchup dependent, but if you're getting this could really give you a turn to Ad Nauseam, depending on how much fuel that Doxad Extortionist is giving you. But if you're going to play this deck, mulliganing is what you really need to practice to master this deck. Really figure out great opening hands that are going to give you an explosive start with either one of your two commanders to grind some value or threatening to win without Ad Nauseam. That's it for this video. If you want to take a look exactly how this deck has been put together card by card in the description below of the video, you can find a link to Playam's deck list on Moxfield, exactly how it has been constructed and what's in the maybe board and on in the sideboard. Bye! Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.